I'm Chelsea and I'm a wine low in Grafton in the Lesmore Diocese and t- you are? Good question. <laughs> I am Josine. I'm from Melbourne. I kind of wish I was from Lismore at this time of the year. But yeah, repping from Melbourne, hanging out at the Ignite Conference Brisbane. So it's been really fun. Yeah. So what do you do for a living? Um, so at the moment, I so I moved back from Brisbane after a couple of years to Melbourne, which is my hometown. Um, and I work at the Archdiocese there. They have a youth office. So I do a bit of that. And um, I just really love speaking at stuff. So there's a couple of um, small scale conferences in Melbourne that I love heading to. And um, yeah, that's kind of what I do. It's my jam. Yeah. yeah. Do you like engaging and talking with the youth, especially? Yeah, I kind of like engaging and talking with everyone. Yeah. I think that um, it's just, I don't know, it's a really beautiful thing to stay connected um, by going to these conferences and all different kinds, like with Jesus Youth and big like Indian communities one day and then going into schools the next day and just sharing, realising that the message that we have to share as Christians just speaks to the heart no matter where you are. So yeah. Um, I just love meeting people so much. I don't know if it's just because I'm an extrovert or a European or both, but I'm just like, I love people. <laughs> when you like first meet someone, say like, it's like, what is your go-to icebreaker to like kind of get to know them? Yeah. If I haven't already made an idiot out of myself, that's <laughs> probably like the initial icebreaker. <laughs> this, and I don't even have to try to do that. I am such a, like, a visual person. I'm so observant. So, like, if someone has amazing hair, it's not forced. Like, I'll just start talking about your yeah. hair. We had this <laughs> conversation. But it's just amazing. I love, yeah. yeah, I love humans and how different we all are. So, I actually genuinely love getting to know people's yeah. story and who they are and quirky stuff. So, yeah, it's my go-to. Yeah, talking about stories, last night you were a keynote? Will we say oh, keynote? We'll call it that. Well, you, well, we heard from you last <laughs> night on our first night of the rally mm. of Ignite. And there was so many things that you were talking about that were just like small words that were just like sparking to me. And I'm like, mm. oh, they're things that I wish that I knew when I was younger. Mm. And especially mm. when you were talking about how you went to your first like Catholic camp and you're like, oh, it's going to be like old people yeah. and <laughs> grannies. Let's maybe do some knitting or <laughs> reading Bible. And that's always what I thought yeah. as well but yeah. then it's such like an awakening when you see the youth mm, totally like I don't know it's just so it's such a special feeling to be able to be like these piece these people understand what I'm thinking totally and it's so funny because I love grandmas who knit and drink tea and talk about God I love them so much mm. but it's just so funny because none of none of the conferences I've ever been to have ever been like that so it's just <laughs> really funny that that's the perception we have of what it will be like like we just assume it's going to be irrelevant and we assume it's going to be lame but every conference I've been to every Catholic conference or Christian conference is not that yeah and so it's just so funny how much of an influence our misconceptions can have over our life um, so it's really cool. And maybe that's why when we come to things like Ignite, it like blows our mind because we've kind of been building up this story that isn't reality. Yeah. And then we realise like, oh my gosh, this is just so much more than I ever could have imagined. But yeah. bring on the grannies with the tea. They're the best people to chat to. Oh, so so good. no prejudice against them. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Oh, yeah. And last night you, I really liked your analogy with the box, like mm. taking off like the different layers mm. of wrapping, but then also talking about, like, the kiddie pool and, like, brown coat. Yeah. And it's, like, it's so, like, relevant to your life. It's, like, <clears throat> you may not think it, but there's, like, things going on and you just need to take, like, leave it, take that next step. And yeah. I feel like here at Ignite this year, there's going to be so many people that took something from that mm, cool. in their own different way. Yeah. And, like, a kid that <laughs> I was talking to last night, he's, like, I'm in, like I did ministry like the ministry class but like hearing that it's making me want to just take every opportunity that I'm getting at Ignite mm-hmm. and see what new comes totally it's just crazy when you actually think about it because like I don't spend a lot of time thinking about that mm-hmm. and it's funny because whenever I give a talk I actually feel like I'm the first person I'm talking to like mm-hmm. it's a bit oh, it's not selfish but I feel like God really slams me first and so that's why I can only ever be real and I can only ever share dumb, real things that happen to me because I feel like God's speaking to me. But 
yeah, in writing this talk, I'm like, man, like I don't stop and look enough in my everyday, every single moment. Like God is there every single moment, but I probably check in once every three days, you know, or I check in every couple of hours and I'm like, oh, you know, but he's actually here right now. And he was in the, you know, rally last night, but he was also with me last week when I was freaking out about the talk, you know, yeah. like he's just so with us all the time. But it's crazy to think that we just have to make, be aware of it. Yeah. And as soon as we're locked in, it's like, oh my gosh, like I can see him everywhere. I love what Father was saying this morning about um, giving thanks to God. Yeah. Um, and how that just makes us so aware. When you start thanking God for the little things that you have, you start to realise like, oh my gosh, he was there and he was there. And yeah, yeah. I've got to do that more. It's like in class with like a group of my kids, like we've started like in our prayer, we were like, okay, we all need to say one thing we're grateful for. Yeah. And they're all like slowly coming up with different things. It used to be like family friends just like the, ba- like, you say just the basic things <laughs> yeah, no, but I then do. it like got to the stage where it's like to be able to breathe or wow. for the opportunity <clears throat> of like this class or just like particular people that do impact their life and yep. I think it's so important that we do need to just thank God for every single thing that we do totally and I don't think it's um it's not inbuilt into our lives to do that. I think, like, without sounding like an old, annoying person, but we're just so constantly switched on to everything else, and something is always in our face mm-hmm. that to just put all that stuff away just mm. for a second can be so powerful to be like, oh my gosh, like, where am I? At? Like, what's my name again? Like, yeah. <laughs> and when no one's watching, you know, what am I actually feeling right now? And and allowing God into that process, like it's just so important for us now to just push pause on everything every now and then. Not even every now and then, more than every now and then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like it's good to just take, to stop and just take that moment. Yeah. And like yeah. some people, like you forget about it, but like you still need to try as much as you can. Yeah. What would be one bit of advice that you'd give to like the young people at home that didn't come or even the people here about either like taking that break or just thanking God or just just something about what you shared last night just one bit of advice like so how do they so how to reflect on their day or I think um we can just be so real with God and like I would hate it if there was like I actually do really dislike it when there's someone in front of me and they take a call or they like quickly send a text message and I just feel like God has feelings too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's not a brat like me, but um, and He patiently patiently waits. But I think the best moments of prayer and sometimes you really like are not in the mood and you know whatever, but is to just put my phone away and not for three hours of deep reflection, but just for five minutes, mm-hmm. just actually put my phone in another room and. Um, I find, maybe it's just me because I'm such a, like, I exist in such a people world and I am constantly, but just to write stuff down. Yes. I don't think I naturally reflect very well. Like, I'm not all deep and meaningful all the time. Um, Just to write down, like, gratitude, like, I am grateful for, and I just write. And um, for five minutes. um, But sometimes it's more and more than just gratitude. Like, I want to be grateful, but there might be real stuff going on in my life as well, and I want to talk that out. Um, and yeah, might sound lame, but doesn't feel lame when I do it. But just writing that out on a piece of paper, or if you want, get a cool leather-bound journal. Or um, yeah, God just wants to chat. Like God wants to chat like this. Like I feel yeah. so easy being next to you and just so chill. And um, yeah, He just wants your everyday chats. He just yeah. wants to be in amongst it with you. And it's not like He's forcing Himself in. Like no. what Father Dan was talking about this morning. Like. Yep. He's not barging through the door. He's yeah. just patiently waiting mm. for us to take that moment to stop yeah. and to ha- like yeah. engage that conversation. Totally. And it's like that misconception again. We just assume God's going to be angry at us. We think God's this like guy, who, like Zeus watching us like for our every mistake. But it's so unfair on God because like not once does he say that to us. Like yeah. not once has my ex- – like I've had some pretty like big wake-up calls, but it's never been a slap in the face. It's never been, you don't deserve this, you know, forgiveness, Justine. Like, show me, prove to me that you're sorry. Like, our idea of how God is going to respond to us is so different to who he is to us. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I think sometimes the biggest thing we can do is just put our misconception aside and, 
and actually believe that what he says is true instead of writing our own story about who God is, actually taking his word for it. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah.